Hello, my darlings. Welcome to another video. I tried to find some tips for you, some secrets, if you will, that I found really interesting and smart. So if you are intrigued, then keep on watching. This first tip is very simple, but very practical as well. I love saving time, and if I can kill two birds with one stone, I wouldn't kill any birds, but anyways, then that's perfect. So in the Handbook of Beauty from 1955, which I really studied when I did my previous video with the 1950s workout, if you haven't watched it, you should better. It's very funny and entertaining. The author suggests that you should clean your face before you do any workout. You can use a cream suitable for your skin type and apply a light coat. And this is a double duty beauty trick as the combined effect of the cream and the stirring up of your circulation through exercise results in an extra fine facial. I totally agree. And even though I'm not going to try that workout or any kind of workout again, as it was a big fail, I will definitely try this trick when I do my chores around the house. And while we're in the subject of creaming our faces, when we don't have a lot of time or any inclination to do something very elaborate, then we can do a very quick mask, which is to put a thick layer of vanishing cream on our face, leave it for one minute, and then remove it with tissues. To this, I will add that before applying your thick coat of cream, it's best to rinse your face with hot water, just to open up the pores a little bit, that will help the mask or cream to absorb a lot better. So that is a very quick and nice solution for when you don't have a lot of time or when you have somewhere to go. So just when you're going around the house or around your wardrobe trying to find what you will wear, you just put this mask on and by the time you have picked your outfit, you're ready to remove it and go on with your makeup. In the context, of dull duty beauty tricks or saving time. I will mention the next tip, which is after you do your pedicure at home, when you do it yourself, while your polish dries, you can use this time to flex your toes or to massage your feet. So you can spread and clench your toes by picking up marbles, or you can do what I did. You can roll a small bottle back and forth with the ball of your feet and that gives you a great massage. I really find it so boring to wait around while my polish dries. So I find this genius. The next tip is actually from Aaron Westmore himself, and you can hear him in this recording. Hello there, this is Aaron Westmore from Hollywood. Well, for reasons of copyright, I cannot play the whole thing, but he collaborated with a brand of cosmetics to create a special recording in which he was explaining in detail how to do facial exercises to help with the muscles and the wrinkles. You can listen to that recording for free at archive.org. One of my favorite expressions or exercises from this picture is this one, because it's an expression I very often have in my house. With five cats, you can never imagine what you will see next. Let's try it. Here I want you to gently press your lips together, open and spread your mouth as wide as you can. No, I think it's... Joking aside, I think these exercises are really good for working your mouth muscles, your neck muscles and everything in the face. I found the next tip particularly interesting because I'm a makeup artist and I hadn't thought of that. And it has to do with rouge. The author says that the whole point of rouge is not to seem like rouge, but like a subtle natural pink flush, especially in the morning where we, we, we don't want our rouge to be very, very obvious, then I really like this trick. So here's how it goes. So a lot of women do not know where exactly they should apply the rouge and a good way to find where you should apply it is this one. Take a washcloth dipped in hot water and hold it to your cheeks. Then remove the towel, the washcloth, and watch where the blood rises to the surface. That is the area where you should apply your blush. That's where your natural flush is. I totally agree with this trick. Try it. While we're in the bathroom, let's try the next one. So maybe you're on a camping trip and you don't have a basin to wash in. I would never go camping, but that's another thing. 
Or maybe you have a very bad cold and you don't want to expose yourself to a shower or a bath. Or maybe I would say you don't have a lot of time again and you want something very quick and easy. You can have a towel bath. How? Oh, let me tell you. You can soak a towel in warm suds, squeeze the excess water and go over your whole body with the towel, rubbing vigorously. Then rinse the towel thoroughly in clear water and then go over your whole body again with the towel. Follow with a brisk rub with a dry towel. And there you go. You're clean and fresh. The next beauty secret is my absolute favorite. I had never thought of that. It has to do with brushing hair. We all know that it's recommended to brush your hair like at least a hundred times, or it was in the 40s and the 50s. And, you know, using our, our lovely brush to comb our hair and distribute, redistribute the oils of the hair, blah, blah, blah. And of course, that's a great tip. And the author says that it doesn't really matter how many times you do it, as long as you do it consistently. It's more important that you brush your hair consistently every day than to do it like 300 times once a week. Who brushes their hair 300 times? I wouldn't. So here's the trick. She suggests that we put an old nylon over our brush and use it to brush our hair. That way, any dirt or soot or anything like that that's in our hair will not get transfer it to the brush and also will not get transferred to the hair once again because while brushing and brushing again we remove the dirt from the top to the bottom and then putting it back again on our roots so this way she suggests that we comb one area of our hair with the nylon on the brush and then we move the nylon so we use a clean area of the nylon again against the brush and apart from protecting our hair from redistributing the dirt, also protects our brush. Because washing your brush very often is not very good. Especially if it's a vintage brush like this one, which has wood here and it's kind precious. I wouldn't want to damage it. Also, she mentioned something very interesting. The fact that many of us are afraid that brushing so many times will, will ruin our hair set. And she says, and I quote, Quite the contrary, a hair setting that is unbrushed will begin to look like a wig after a while. Uh, I think she's right. If your hair has just been set and is completely dry, brushing it will loosen the set just enough to make it look more natural. Good hairdressers themselves thoroughly brush hair they've just set before they add the final combing touches. So I guess we have the go ahead from the hairdressers, don't we? Witch Hazel was very popular back in the 50s. Constance Hart believed that a very effective treatment for tired eyes are compressors with witch hazel. The trick is to soak pieces of cotton in witch hazel and then lie down, close your eyes and place the cotton over them and keep it there for 15 minutes. Also, a brand that was a household name back then, E.E. E. Dickinson's, they suggested to do a final rinse in witch hazel, which cuts soapy residue, removes it and leaves the hair fresh. Another beauty secret or tip I found really interesting is for you working girls, especially when you work at an office or somewhere that is not your house. Again, the author of The Handbook of Beauty, 1955, suggests that if you're a working girl, it's best that you remove your makeup at lunchtime or when you have a break. So you can use your favorite makeup remover and remove the makeup and apply a fresh coat of makeup. If you did your makeup at 8 a.m. for example, or even earlier, then by lunchtime, it's usually a little bit oily or a bit dry or a bit dull. So I definitely agree with that tip and I would definitely try it if I was working at an office. So this brings us to our last, but not least, beauty secret tip. I don't know how to call this. This is actually something I would never try because I don't feel very inclined to do so. So as you can watch in this clip, my salad for dinner, they would suggest I put it on my face, which is something that I wouldn't want to try. 
Um, they do not clarify if there's olive oil or a lemon in it or any other condiments. I suppose not. But anyways, I just included this for fun because I'm sure none of you would want to try this at home or anywhere else for that matter. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please hit the like button and please subscribe for more vintage cuteness. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!